the person was in, in, in a hoodie top and they got up and they ran in the opposite direction. But I had just passed a female runner and the penny didn't drop until I was back into my run that I assumed that this person was actually in pursuit of the, of, of the female runner that I just passed. This is Running For Real, the podcast for runners who know that for every runner's high, there are just as many lows. All those just missed PRs, easy runs that feel hard, injury blues and more. Each week, we'll talk to running, health, and wellness experts about their highs, lows, and best advice to build our confidence. Running for Real is about being honest, being brave, and most of all, not feeling alone. And now here's our host, who gets excited about going to the mailbox. Tina Muir. Hello, my friends, and welcome to episode 37 of the Running For Real podcast. I am thankful that you are here right now, and this is a really important one, and so I'm glad that you are listening to this right now because it's something that we all kind of take for granted a little bit too much. I know I was very naive, kind of thought I was invincible, but runner safety is so important. And this is a really great tool that you're going to learn about today that will really help you, but also you can learn some great advice on how to stay safe. So hopefully you will appreciate that one as much as I did because it was kind of insightful and I've really enjoyed using this product today. Now, in addition to this product today, this is actually a bit of a unique episode. I've never done anything like this before, but hopefully you will enjoy it. If you do not want to hear the second half of the interview, or not even an interview, the second half of this episode, you do not have to. There's absolutely no pressure, but I thought I would do something a bit unique. Now, the second half of this podcast is going to be a runner gift guide that gives you the recommendations for runners that I have kind of thought of myself that I love and use all the time. And then also ones that my community, the Running For Real Superstars, which by the way, if you have not yet joined us, the Running For Real Superstars on Facebook, it's time to do it. So come join us, come find us and you will love it. But anyway, the group kind of came up with some products that we loved and together we have made this big list of products to give you some ideas for maybe Christmas presents, Hanukkah presents, you know, every other celebration that there could be. This is definitely a giving time of year. So you may find something that you can get either a loved one you know who runs, or maybe you can put it on your list for something you would like. So after a quick word from our sponsors of this episode, whose products, by the way, I definitely recommend as gifts, um, we will be right to the interview with David. Are you ready to meet my running buddy? Because she wants to meet you. I'd like to introduce you, my friends, to V. Hi, Running For Real listeners. I'm excited to finally meet you. I'm looking forward to telling you more about how I can help you later in the show. December already. (laughs) I can barely believe it either. Although I actually love this time of year. Everyone's in a good mood and things are really cheery. Our friends at Body Health are feeling especially good. And later in the show, I'll tell you how you can be one of two winners of a six pack of Perfect Amino. You can tune in later to hear more. David, thank you so much for joining me on the Running For Real podcast. I am really excited that you are here right now. This is something that is so important. And, um, you know, we were just talking in the few minutes before we started saying how I didn't think it was something I used to think about, but now being pregnant, I'm very aware of it. So looking forward to our chat today. Thank you so much for joining me. Ditto. Thanks a million, Tina. I really appreciate this. I know. This is great. And I know people are going to love your accent. So be having mostly an American <laughs> audience, they're just going to be like, ah, oh, like listening. No, it's funny with the accents. I'm from Dublin originally, so uh, and I'm living in Cork in Ireland. So I, there's different levels of the Dublin accent. Uh-huh. So I have to... I've been warned to tone it down. So uh, when <laughs> I'm in Dublin, down. I can I, when I'm in Dublin, I can tone it up. But uh-huh. yeah, I, I tone it down for interviews. Yeah. So. Actually, um, so I had a, a guest on the podcast, uh, Kyle Merber, who the listeners will all know. Uh, a few months ago, he's a professional runner. He's run three fifty two in the mile. He um, just got married in Ireland and he actually made a translation card. I'm not sure if you saw this. It was in the Daily Mail. He made made a translation card for his American guests um, of (laughs) Irish words that they would need to know. And it was all the really crude ones and the really, you know, the ones that probably most Americans would be horrified to see. But it it was just hilarious seeing that he made a translation card. So um, I'm sure you're you're used to talking to um, 
people in other countries so you know which words to use but I was saying to um, yeah it's, it's 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 funny because even when you're talking I, I use some words that are not necessarily Dublinese is called it's 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 a, it's a form of Dublin language but sometimes I'm a habit uh, of of speaking in Irish the mm-hmm. odd time and I use words in Irish and I, I I'm looking at the interview and I'm just going they didn't understand what I said. I sp- <laughs> I didn't speak in Dublin. I spoke in Irish. This is taking it to a different level altogether. Yeah. yeah. Well, I get, don't worry. I'm used to those looks. Um, as you probably know, if you visited America, um, I whenever I order the, a water, uh, oh, yeah. the waiter <laughs> stares at me for about five minutes. So I'm plenty used to that stare. So yeah. let's, but there won't be much of that. Hopefully the listeners will kind of get everything we're saying today. All right. Sure. So let's start with you. Um, You know, you've started this business uh, with your wife, Ellen. Um, The first thing I kind of wanted to to ask you about, because this is a question I always get, being my husband is also my coach. Um, We work really well as a coach and athlete, but how is it working with Ellen, kind of having that couple relationship? You know, most people say to me that they wouldn't be able to handle um, working and you know, living with their other half, but how, how do you guys make it work as a couple, um, owning a business together? Yeah, it's, it's a question we're actually asked a lot and it's, <laughs> it's a question, it's a question our friends ask us as well. They say, and, and, and they're quite <laughs> transparent about it. They say the same thing. Well, we couldn't do it or uh, I certainly couldn't do it, but we've always done it. And, um, when we first met, uh, we worked in music retail. So, so from there on, we were, as we were always attached by the hip in different ventures that mm-hmm. we did. So it just was just a natural progression when we have a business idea, we usually do it together. We're both from marketing backgrounds, so we different slants and different takes on things. And it just I suppose it just always gelled. Mm-hmm. The only downside I find is that it, it never leaves you. Yes. I and mean, you probably know this. It, mm-hmm. It's always part of it. If I was in business with, with my best pal, it would be okay come five or six, I could come home and and, and I leave it behind me. But when you're living, working together, uh, operating from the house, it's 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 nonstop. You, mm-hmm. you you sit down at dinner and you try your hardest not to, <laughs> you, yeah. but you do. You you just say, "What about that email?" And 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 it's not just that. And you're looking around the table at your three kids and you're going, "I mustn't do it. I can't. I have to do it." And I'm going to say it, <laughs> and I make just something I run angel. So that's probably the only downside. But you know, we're fortunate in that we can do it together. The sacrifice and, and, and the concern and the worry and the stress is, is probably the biggest thing because ultimately we've both given up mm. uh, livelihoods to do this. Mm. Whereas if, if one of us was still out working, if Ella was out working and, and I was doing Run Angel or vice versa, then you kind of have that little bit of peace of mind that, look, if this doesn't work out or worst case scenario, at least one of us still has a gainful employment. So that's always a worry. Mm-hmm. And that's a, that's a daily worry for us, you know, um, having, a, having a new business like Run Angel. But I suppose we're doing it together. We're fortunate we can do it together. And we get on very well. So we're both easygoing. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's great. Good. It's good. It's, 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 as I said, my friends and, and Ellen's friends would go, we couldn't do it. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I see my own parents are very like that. My own parents are our are, are best mates and, uh, you know, and, and maybe that's the way I was brought up you know, to, to be like that, you know, that that person in your life is number one. So yeah. again, we're, we're just lucky to, to be doing it together. No, that's great. So then let's kind of dive into it. Um, you know, you mentioned Run Angel a few times there, but for someone listening, what is Run Angel? So kind of start with that. Yeah, well, Run Angel is, is a personal safety wearable that emits a very, very loud alarm and uh, sends out emergency alerts by SMS and email to your to your loved ones telling you telling them where effectively you are when you've triggered your run angel um it's uh, our usb is basically in our sound capability of run angel it's 120 decibels and four years ago if you had to say that to me i wouldn't have known what 120 decibels was but 120 decibels is extremely loud it's rock concert loud it's standing in front of speakers at a bruce springsteen concert it's loud but to harness that loud sound in something so small that can effectively sit on your wrist was a, a, a big chore in itself mm-hmm. so it is it's a safety wearable with with sound capability. It's not a silent safety wearable, which, you know, it doesn't make any sense to me. It, it's something that can get, that can resonate at a very high dB level that the sound can travel further because we've tuned the frequency. But at the same time, in the event of an attack or an injury that the alarm is activated, but that the SMS goes out to your, your husband, your partner, your girlfriend and telling them where you are. It gives your Google, Google map links. It sends out emails and it presents a dashboard of guardians and things like that. So it's in effect, it's a piece of iron wearable. 
we hope you never have to use it. But at the same time, again, it, it's it's peace of mind for the wearer and, and for their family. Mm-hmm. No, that's great. Thank you for the explanation there. And and what about where where did the idea come from? You know, was it that one of you have been through an assault? Um, you know, there's a lot going around about this um, hashtag Me Too campaign right now, yeah. um, which is kind of showing that assault is you know, more prominent than initially realized maybe in different situations, but it is kind of happening and we see it in the media a lot that uh, assaults do happen to runners. But where did you and Ellen kind of come up with the idea that this was something that needed to be out there? Yeah, it's something that first came about, I'd say about four, four or five years ago. I've, I've been running a long time myself and um, I suppose our conflicting schedules, one of us would run very early in the morning, one of us would run in the evening. So it was on one very early morning run that I was on that I was knocked to the ground by by, by somebody, assuming it was another runner or just somebody going out for a walk. But the person was in, in, in a hoodie top and they got up and they ran in the opposite direction. But I had just passed a, another runner, a female runner, and the penny didn't drop until... I was back into my run that I assumed that this person was actually in pursuit of the, of, of the female runner that, that I just passed moments earlier because they went back in the opposite direction. So this kind of stayed with me for a little bit while afterwards. And then Ellen would go out in her run and, and we'd speak about it. We'd speak about the isolation uh, a runner sometimes feels. Um, we'd speak about different events that we, we'd see out. We'd, we'd like the, the situation where you'd hear a runner before you'd see them listening to headphones. And I'd often go, uh, it's something I wouldn't do mm-hmm. necessarily have my music at that volume and, and not be aware of what's going on around me. And I did suppose that, we. Sorry, did that make you more like Ellen going out running on her own? Did that make that situation make you kind of suddenly worried for her, like, you know, protective? Yeah, I, I well? suppose it, it did, but I suppose it just made it a little bit more real because when Ellen was on her run, she, she'd come in and she'd be able to say the same thing that I was saying. Or, or um, she'd experience that. I won't say fear because that's, that's too big a word. Uh, I just this awareness Ellen would run and she'd have her phone in her hand, um, which isn't ideal. And the last thing you want to do is when you go out for a run and start thinking about bad things. Mm-hmm. You want to just tie your laces and just head out and enjoy your run. You don't have to start thinking about what's going to happen to you. So we noticed a shift in the industry as, as, as marketeers. We noticed that, you know, you go into a Nike store and there was a lot more space dedicated towards the female market. And, and this is becoming more prominent. And, and then we were seeing these, you know, assaults on female runners and um, it was just becoming a little bit more in your face for us. Mm. And I suppose as a paranoid protective husband, I decided to go online and see was available for uh, for Ellen that she could wear on her runs. And, and I couldn't really find anything that was, say, aesthetically pleasing or that could sit on the wrist. Um, and, and just that she would wear, I have to be honest, that, you know, that it wasn't one of these... Um, and I don't like to use the term loosely as these rape alarms that we'd see when we were in our college days, university days, these big cumbersome things that you'd pull a key in mm-hmm. and make a very loud noise. So we needed something that, you know, was small and, and that could sit neatly on the wrist. So we couldn't find anything. So we kind of just went about to find out why. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, and the reason why it was down to physics, it wasn't down to anything else but that, because to make a very loud sound, it comes down to the acoustic capabilities and I'm not technical at all, I have to say. I ask my kids to do all the Instagrams and change the TV. So we went to various colleges and university professors and we asked them to explain this to us. And they said, you need an acoustic chamber to make this noise. And the size, the bigger your acoustic chamber, the louder your noise. So then we understood why these relics, these alarms were very big because they had a big acoustic chamber. So we thought it was, that was it, game over. But we went outside the universities and we did it privately and we hired acoustic engineers and they said, no, it's not going to be easy, but it's something we can do. We said it has to be small because it's, it's predominantly going to be worn on a female wrist and, it's, and it's, it's, it can't be big because it just it won't sell or it won't be used. It'll be discarded and we don't want that. It's a safety wearable. So we spent the last few years making this acoustic chamber um, smaller and smaller until we could get it to a situation where it could still maintain that loud siren at 120 decibel threshold that you all tr- strive to get and then have it tuned that the sound would carry so uh, yeah it, it was an arduous task but we got there in the end yeah and, and I, we- I will attest to that that um i do have a run angel myself and i have little baby wrists like you know most watches don't f- fit my wrist but um the run angel does fit my wrist and it you know sits there quite nicely um i think there might even be one maybe um little notch left and I literally have 
baby wrists. So, um, <laughs> so I will attest that you did get it right in the end and uh, is, is a nice size. It fits nicely on your arm. And you mentioned, you know, a few times about the alarm, uh, sends out an alarm as loud as a rock concert and sends uh, alerts to your loved ones. So for someone listening, you know, how just down to the basics, how is this going to help someone in a moment of danger? Um, You know, what do they have to do uh, if they do have a run angel and, you know, how is this going to help them? Yeah, well, well, the the definition of a personal attack alarm is is really to give you that uh, few seconds to make your escape. That's fundamentally what a personal attack alarm is. Um, it, it's not going to have a hologram to attack an attacker. It's just to give you that moment, distraction, really, to get out of there as quickly as you can. And the alarm does that. The attacker assailant is not going to be expecting this loud noise. So when you trigger your run angel, which is one touch activated, we, we didn't go into this hold down a button for three seconds, release for two seconds. It doesn't make, it didn't make any sense to us because when we were designing and developing an angel, it always had to be real life scenarios. So at every level, every stage of development, it was always in a real life uh, scenario. What would you do? Uh, how would it work? Would you actually do that? Um, what if it's worn here? What if it's triggered this way? So it was always done as easy, accessible as possible. So if somebody is out and they're in a situation and, and they are, under attack or duress that they touch run angel um, it activates at the loud alarm would hope it would distract the assailant and make your make your escape but at the same time it would actually because we have an app that goes with the uh, the wearable device the three guardians uh, listed on the app would receive an sms alert to say where you are and um, to say that you're that you're in trouble so that's in effect what, what it would do in, in a real life scenario but again it is the sound capability that really is, is, is the USB for us. And, and not just in an assailant perspective. I have used Run Angel when I was out running in, in, in Killarney and I have fallen in the middle of nowhere yeah. uh, with prototype Run Angels on me and uh, I've activated them and they've worked. They've, they've attracted attention from people I couldn't see in the distance. Um, so yes, you have the, you have the attack perspective, but then you also have the injuries perspective. If somebody falls or trips and, or has a heart condition when they're running, which we're seeing more of now with with statistics and Martin runners. So on that level, the alarm carries the sound and carries the greater distance. And then the peace of mind is the second tier of security, which is the, the SMS to your nearest and dearest and the emails to your nearest and dearest. Yep, absolutely. And you know, you said about, you know, running somewhere remote and I know more and more of us, we're craving getting out into the middle of nowhere, getting away from all the buzz of daily life. And, you know, it's great to go do things like that, but then you're right that like, say something happens or, you know, it's the middle of the summer, you pass out somewhere or thinking of extremes like that. What's the film called? 127 hours, was it? Or 27? Yes, yes, yeah, like that. Yeah. He could have, you know, yeah. <laughs> could you, have you, just, you, so, you don't know. That's yeah. the thing. You, you don't know. And, and since launching an angel, it, it's certainly be an eye opener because you, you research a product for four or five years and you've got your head into it. You only know how it's going to do when it comes out and you're going to only know market reaction when it comes out. And mm-hmm. like we've been overwhelmed by the emails and not just necessarily from customers because that, that'd be, the wrong thing to say. It, it just emails from people saying this is a good idea. This is something that's needed. Um, and then there's also the sad stories, the real stories from people who have been attacked, or we received a, an email from a lady whose husband was out training for the London Marathon and he suffered a, a heart fatality and, and and passed away. But she wasn't notified about it until that evening. She assumed he was just out doing a long long distance training, so he would be gone a, a fair few hours. But you know, she had said, had he run Angel on, you know, I'd be aware or somebody else would have known where he was. So, you know, this is only coming to fruition now once the product is out in the marketplace. So it, it does give you more impetus to to drive on with it when, you, when you're getting these emails in. Mm-hmm. And again, because they're all real life stories, you know, and, and some of them aren't nice and not pleasant. Um, as I said, it, it just, it just you know, we, we can resonate with the importance of a product like this, not just from a commercial standpoint, but just when we set out to do it, we, we felt, look, we'll give it our all because this is needed. You know, this, this could do well for people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. And okay. So just some logistical t- questions here. Um, the sound will continue then until you switch it off or and like, yeah, the sound will continue for, 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 um, up to an hour on, on full charge. But after saying that, 
it's not the sort of sound you want going for an no, hour. I was going to say, you so might it, have some ear damp, uh, some hearing exactly, damage. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Because it, it is 120 decibels, but it's also tuned to resonate for human hearing. When okay. we when we achieved 120 decibels, our engineers came back to us and said, yep, that's just the first hurdle. And we were like, no, that's brilliant news. It's very loud, but it's not tuned. You have to tune the frequency so that it essentially will be heard by human mm-hmm. hearing. We were like, this is, is this needed? No, this is essentially needed. So... You don't want to go on too long, but uh, having said that, we engineered it. We made it rechargeable because um, it had to go on for a certain amount of time. We could have used the CR batteries that, that you see in other wearable tech devices, these six-month batteries that you have to replace. But when you're talking about a safety wearable, you can't do that. You, you can't say, look, this is a six-month battery. When you're using parts and components that pull so much energy, it has to be rechargeable. So again, it was an next peace of mind level that we said we we'll put in a rechargeable battery so that the user is always knowing that they're going to have this full hour at 120 decibels. Okay. The app also lets them know on the screen what percentage level they're at. Okay. So okay. They, they're able to see you need more charge in it. Okay. And then, so that goes on to my next question. Do you have to have the phone to use it? Um, I mean, I know the answer to this, but um, do you, for someone listening, do they need to have it? What if they don't run with their phone? Um, no, they, they don't have to have the phone with them because they, they're harnessing effectively the sound if something happens. Um, I've gone out without my phone and my run angel's been on and I've tested it out in remote places when I'm trail running or, or wherever and the sound still carries a great distance or or we'll, we'll, I'll go out with a few runners and um, I'll play hide and seek for want of a different word. So I'll go a certain distance ahead of these guys and uh, I'll, I'll activate my run angel and they effectively have to come find me. So we've done all that fun testing, but no, you don't have to have your phone. The, the alarm will still work. We, we encourage, I suppose, as a safety wear of a company, we'll always encourage your runners to take their phones with them. Irrespective of a run angel or not, we'd always say, take your phone with you if you're running. Um, and do the more. SMS, the alert text, so those goes even if you don't have your phone? You know, you need your phone for the SMS because okay. the app is on the phone. So you're harnessing the app from the phone to send the SMS and emails. Um, so, yeah, you, you definitely need that for the second level, but not for the first level, which is the sound. Okay. And then what about for someone who, you know, let's say someone's guardian, um, can, does it track location so they can see where they are, like even before they set it off? Or is it only going to set the location if the alarm goes off? This was an interesting one, actually, when, when, when we started researching it, we, we brought in focus groups and runners, and um, it, it was one of those areas that you want Big Brother constantly watching you, um, and we looked at other wearable tech devices, and we said, in our case, we don't want that. We, we don't want to be, what's, what's they call it, the, the, the boyfriend principle, where I, yeah. I know where you are all the time. <laughs> we kind of didn't want that in a safety wearable. I know there's people out there go, I would like that feature. I'd like to be seen, tracked. Uh, my, my husband or partner, my girlfriend can go and see me traveling a certain route. But it, just the feedback we got, we said, no, we just pull your location when you activate it. We, we don't want to know always where you're going. We're not that type of company. We don't want to be clicking in and seeing so-and-so's going in this run now and we have this data. That, that's not what we're about. We can let the bigger brands do that. Yeah. Um, we just pull the location when the, when it's when it's activated. All right, great. And so for someone, you know, I mentioned this to you in the pre-talk um, before we went on air about how before I got pregnant, I guess bef- while I was a professional runner, I kind of saw myself as invincible. You know, I don't need any of these safety products. I can just run away. I can, um, you know, I don't, nothing like that is going to happen to me. Like you were saying about not thinking about the negative, I kind of just assumed I'd be fine. Uh, now I obviously am more aware of it. Um, what would you like to say to runners who kind of are in that same mindset of, well, I don't need anything like this. You know, I, I can outrun someone or I'll be fine. It won't happen to me. What would you say there? No, I, I can I can fully appreciate a, a runner's mindset. Um, you know, and it was for me being being a runner myself, the, the same mindset was that, you know, I, I, I don't need to think about the fear or the aspect of, of this and, I'm fast enough to outrun anybody, but you know, that's, we can all have that mantra, but I've been out run uh, on a run. Um, and I've come across a group of guys and they've been drinking for one of another word. We are in Ireland. So, uh, they've been drinking and I've been running at night and uh, I passed them out and, uh, they, they were heckling me anyway. So I, I did my fastest I could do. They started to throw bottles, couldn't catch me. Happy days. I got away. 
when I got to the car park, uh, there was a lady getting out of her car and it was a question of going up to her and, and I know I'm a stranger and I said, look, there's a group of guys down there. You might want to go a different way, go, go down that path. And instead of, of the lady saying, you know, OK, thanks, I'm going to go down this way, she got back into her car and drove home. And again, this kind of hit me. I was going, this is wrong. This is not, you know, mm. this is somebody who's come out for a run and, and now they're not going for a run. They've got back into their car and they're going home. And, and, and that just really annoyed me because you should be able to just go for your run and that's it. And I think in developing a product like Rain, Run Asia, we've kind of effectively done that, just put on your Run Asia and go for your run. If something happens, yeah, at least you know it's on your wrist. If nothing happens, you, you, it's too light, you won't even feel it on your wrist. That's the argument against it. I don't think any of us are invincible. Maybe as we're getting older, maybe as I'm getting older, um, I kind of, I kind of feel it more. If I was in my twenties, I'd, I'd say differently. I'd say no, uh, I'm fine. But all I can say is, as, as, as head of a wearable tech company, and the emails I receive from dads, from from students on campuses in, in the states, from people whose kids are traveling on gap years in India and, and beyond. Um, and, and then from runners themselves who've been attacked and, and as I said, horrific stories, you know, it does happen. And, and it's unfortunate, it may not happen to some people listening, but, you know, it is just peace of mind. It, it's why we put our seatbelt on in the car. It's it's why we do certain things, you know, make sure the baby seat in the car is tied correctly. It is peace of mind. And, and that's the way I think people should live, live their life. I think you should be conscious of, of your surroundings, not in a scaremongering fear kind of way. We should just get on with our, our daily lives. But at the same time, it should be there in the background. And I, I think maybe uh, maybe as a dad, I have a responsibility to my kids to make sure I'm still around. So I wear it on that basis. Ellen wears her real angel on that basis because she still wants to be around. Um it's, it's not something that we think about doing when we put on a run angel. And the same with other people that have their run angels. It's the same way they come back to us, I wear mine because, um, and it's usually the same story. Yeah, no, that's great. And I, and I will say, you know, as I mentioned, I do have a run angel. I have been using it for every run I've been doing on my own. And, and it does give you that peace of mind. You know, I, I find myself, um, well, I found myself kind of avoiding, you know, the quiet trails, the quiet areas, uh, on any time that wasn't, you know, middle of the day, which in the summer, um, or sorry, as it's getting colder, um, it's not as easy to do in the summer. It was easy, but, you know, uh, having that run angel on my wrist just gives that peace of mind, knowing that you're just one click away from, you know, a, a loud alarm and, you know, being aware of what's happening and, and the SMS going out. So, um, I will say to the, to the listeners that this definitely is something that I would recommend, uh, strongly. And, you know, as we are coming up to Christmas, the holidays right now, um, this is a good time, you know, perfect thing to kind of put on your list for, um, you know, a potential gift there. So, um, one more thing I wanted to talk about with Run Angel was, you know, you were determined that it was going to be made in Ireland. Um, why was that so important to you as you were kind of coming up with um, the prototype and getting ready to make it? Yeah, I think that was important to us because it's a safety company. Um, we wanted to make sure that every Run Angel that came off the production line uh, was up to standards and we wanted to make sure we were there to see that uh, wearables and, and we know the companies uh, being runners are predominantly made in, in, in China um, that was never an option for us mm -hmm. we decided from, from get go that we wanted to be on uh, hands on very much so we needed to make sure Run Angel was, was doing 120 decibels ourselves so we built an acoustic chamber to test mm -hmm. each Run Angel um, fascinating uh, d d device and so when, when we're producing Run Angel, each Run Angel comes off the, the, the conveyor belt and it goes into this huge washing machine and each one is tested for sound and then it's registered and it's passed and it's in excess of 120 dB. So it's always over 120 dB. So we just needed that. We needed that peace of mind ourselves because we worked so hard on it that mm -hmm. we wanted to make sure we were there when it was happening. Maybe the birth of your child, that sort of thing. It was just so close to us and we put 100% into it. And the same way, it's it's produced in Ireland, it's put together in Ireland. Uh, we work with the guys in the UK as well who make the plastics and the strap. And it's just great synergy because, you know, uh, with what's happening in Europe at the moment, it's difficult times in business, but, you know, we're hard and fast in keeping our production in Ireland and the UK. And as I said, as a safety wearable company, you can't take shortcuts to the finish line. You, you just can't. It'd be easy for me to say it saved the company X amount of money and would just farm it out to an overseas company and, and it just churned them out. Well, we, we, we decided not to. Now, 
obviously we have a few shareholders in the company who aren't too happy about that. But at the same time, they understood that. They understood that it was very important, especially starting out, that, you know, we could babysit each run angel. Um, we box them up, you know, myself and Ellen and a few of our friends here. It's, it's a very hands-on business. It has to be because it, it's, you're, you know, you're so many degrees away from failure if you're not, and you have to always be part of it. So we box them, we post them, we parse them, we send them out. Mm -hmm. So each one we know has gone into a box is, is doing what it should do. Yep. So that's, we go to bed at night, we know of somebody in some part of the world, and Run Angel is in all parts of the world, that it's working the way it's supposed to do. Um, we've shipped Run Angel out to Alaska, to Sydney, to Singapore, to Seattle, to various places. At least we know the wearables that are out there We've, we've, we've handled effectively and we've boxed them. So making it in Ireland and the UK was always, always uh, something we were going to do. Now, yeah. obviously, we could have saved a lot of time, money in doing it a different way. But, no, we decided to. If we can jump in a car and go up to our factory up the road, well, then that's happy days. No, I think that's great. And it's good to have that integrity. You know, not as many companies nowadays have that kind of factor of, of thinking about the product and what they're actually doing rather than actually about the customer rather than, um, you know, just about um, making the dollar sign as, as big as they can. And, you know, that's uh, I've mentioned to the listeners before, that's one of the big reasons um, I have the sponsors I have on the podcast um, is because, you know, it, I only want to be working with companies like that. So it's great that you are another one of those. So that's pretty much all I wanted to ask about Run Angel. I, but I do want to just go a bit off topic here for anyone who is only interested in running stuff you can skip right ahead but I think you might find this kind of interesting otherwise I did mention to you David that I wanted some other things to talk about outside of Run Angel and you have a kind of interesting background in the prior to becoming the founder of um, Run Angel you were a um, manager for Celtic Heartbeat um, now you work with many famous musicians um, uh, for principal management being one of the big ones who have U2 um, That's right, yeah. and Paul McGuinness, who is the U2 uh, manager is actually an investor in Run Angel. So yeah. tell us a bit about what, how, what it was like kind of working in the mu music industry uh, first. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah I, I have a checkered background uh, before Run Angel. Yeah. I, I was always into music uh, from a young age. So, um, as I said earlier, myself and Alan met in retail in, in a music retail store called HMV in her early 20s. And uh, Ellen was a musician herself, classical musician, actually, so uh, she won't mind me saying that. So it kind of started from there. I kind of moved from music retail into bigger music retail and then into music consultancy with various music magazines. And then uh, music management just became inevitability for me. Uh, yeah. And I'm a shy guy. Maybe it doesn't cross on yeah. radio. I'm on a podcast, but I am actually quite shy. So music management, you'd expect this kind of very, yeah, I don't know, definitely. extroverted kind of guy, but it's, it's it's not me. So when I was interviewing one of the acts for, for a music magazine, I was uh, his name is Irlo Leonard. He's, he's a, a, an Irish singer. He's I, he's a channel singer. He sings in Irish. Um, but he was singing with a, a band called the afro Kel Sound System, and, and they're a very, very cool band. Um, so it's very modern contemporary music, and he's just... Is this a singer who just, yeah, he just moved you. And uh, I was just so much into my music. So I was managing this guy for a year or so and, and getting to see places that I never had the opportunity to see. Um, and getting to do things that you only read about or watch on movies, you know, touring with bands and, 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 and what goes with that. So then the opportunity came to work with principal management who, who managed you too. And I had a label called Celtic Heartbeat, which is effectively Riverdance. So they were looking for an A&R manager, which is somebody who goes out and scouts for new talent. Mm. So I applied and a lot of people applied for this job. And I was fortunate to get it. And I was interviewed by Paul McGuinness at the end of it. The last interview, when you got through maybe six or seven interviews, because this was a coveted job, not just for people in Ireland, but it was opened up to people around the world. And uh, Paul would go through a list of, uh, like, and this is before your X Factors and all that. You go through a list of artists and he'd say, would you sign these acts? Mm. So you had to go through a questionnaire and there was loads of different acts on it. And some are very famous acts. Um, or would you manage these acts and, and whatnot? So I obviously passed the test to get that job. <laughs> and um, I, I, yeah, I worked with, with the principal management of U2 and PJ Harvey at the time. And uh, 
again I got to see places I was very fortunate yeah, to see but the guys the guys allowed me to continue managing my own artists my own acts they kind of encouraged this this was separate to my day-to-day job in, in, in there so I was still managing acts myself and they kind of liked that because I was cutting my teeth and doing music contracts where on a smaller scale where you were dealing with bigger bands on, on your daily basis I was dealing with smaller bands outside of that mm. so I, I suppose I'm um, yeah, that, that's how it came about. So when Run Angel, fast forward, when Run Angel was being muted and we were looking for investors, I hadn't spoken to Paul for a while and, and I knew his, his colleague Trevor Bone and I emailed Trevor and said, if there's any chance um, of a coffee sometime soon. And, and Trevor came back immediately and said, yeah, absolutely. So we, we met up and all I was asking Trevor at the time is just advice, guidance. Mm. Um, I wasn't looking for investment. Uh, I was just looking for guidance. I was actually looking for Trevor to come on board as an advisor, which would give me kudos to generate investment. And Trevor really liked Run Angel. His son was a runner in the UK. And uh, he said, no, I really like this. You have a great idea here. And, and I think Paul Meanis is going to like this too. And and Paul got hold of the business plan. And yeah, he said, yeah, this is something we have to get into. And these guys, they don't really they don't really invest. I, I don't think it's because I worked for the guys before. I think they just really liked it. Maybe there was mm. a bit of drive and energy and a vision behind it, but I think they just got it straight away. It wasn't complicated. It wasn't some cloud-based mobile app. It was just something that, you know, protected people when they're out. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the guys just became involved in it uh, and we're very, very lucky because it has opened up many doors for us having the likes of Paul McGuinness and the U2 attachment and, and things like that. So yeah, uh, that's, that's great. we're very, Thank very lucky. So Thanks for sharing. A kind of that's just a all. cool side note that we thought I thought I would talk about there. So before we get on to the running for real four, I have one more question for you being if you were to give an Oscar or maybe an MTV award, uh, MTV, yeah, is it MTV award uh, speech, who would you like to thank? Oh my gosh! Um, who would I like to thank? Uh, I suppose my I can't say yeah. My, I suppose my parents. I thought you were going to say I suppose Ellen maybe. No, but Ellen, <laughs> Ellen, 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 Ellen be given. There's no question of that. Uh, like definitely Ellen, but I mean, <laughs> my parents. I suppose they've always supported us in what we do. It was always they, they always encouraged us to do the things we like to do. Mm-hmm. And, and as a parent of myself. And I have three kids. Uh, I'd always say, college, do this, do that, do this. Oh, do do law, do dentistry, because you're guaranteed big salaries mm-hmm. and all this sort of thing. But my parents are kind of the opposite of that. They just wanted to see us happy. And, and mm. I suppose they allowed us do those sort, sort of things, which has me doing what I'm doing at the moment. I was able to experiment and do different things. And if they didn't work, they didn't work. At least I tried. And I suppose seeing them as the way they were as best mates and... Uh, they always had this thing where, which is very funny, I say today, when they go out with their friends, they, they never talk about their kids. And I always, I didn't get this. And they were like, no, this one thing, when we go out, we don't talk about our children. We just talk about ourselves or we talk about anything but our children. And I didn't get this at the time. So being parents at the moment, and when you go out with your own friends and everybody's got kids, you, you, you're, you're inevitably going to start talking about what your kids mm-hmm. are doing. But we have this thing where we try to say, oh, let's just not talk about kids for now and see what happens. And uh, it, it's very interesting what happens. So I suppose my, my parents are always saying, look, your, your dad comes first or your mother comes first and then you guys. And and I suppose as a, as a new dad myself many years ago, I couldn't get this. I was like, oh God, no way, this is not right. But I, I get it now and I'm seeing it. So I probably learned a lot from them. And as I said, they, they've, they've allowed us as, as siblings to do what, what we want to do. Yeah. And uh, so I suppose now I'm grateful. I'm grateful to having a patient wife who puts up with these <laughs> hair brain ideas that I come up, come up with and, and, doesn't, and doesn't say no. She could easily turn around and say, not a chance, David. No way are we doing this. This is going to cost too much and too many sacks. So w- without Ellen doing it, I suppose, or allowing us doing it, uh, I'd say we'd be, we'd be working oh, elsewhere. So. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. Not at all. Not at all. Okay, so we will just take a moment to thank our sponsors and we'll be back with the Running For Real 4. I teased you with it a little bit earlier in the show and it is now time for me to introduce you to V, my running buddy these past few months and she gets to know me a little bit more every day. I know she can't wait to get to know you too, so welcome V. Hi Running For Real listeners, it's really great to be with you. I've had a really busy summer which has been exhausting, but every day I'm getting stronger, faster and better. For those of you who don't know V, she is the world's first AI personal trainer and she lives in a beautifully designed Harman Kardon 
aka a really good brand, Bluetooth earphones with aerospace grade biosensors, which measure your heart rate, speed, cadence, and more. Basically, she's far more accurate than any of the other wearables out there right now. V, what else can you do? Well, I'm just getting started, but I can help runners find and stay in their ideal heart rate zone so their workouts are more effective. I can also improve cadence, keep track of records, suggest run mantras, and let runners know when their pace is fluctuating so they can correct it on the spot. But ultimately, I just want to boost runners with motivation so they can have a more enjoyable and fun workout. Avoiding injuries, motivation, and enjoying running more? I don't know what else we can ask for. Thank you, V. I'm so glad you were able to introduce yourself to my crew. And for the listeners, you can find out more at getv.com forward slash running to real, where you can enter to win your own V. Thank you, Tina. See you on our next run. At this time of year, we are thankful for what we have, and I am especially thankful for this community. The Running For Real community is absolutely lovely, and as a podcast listener, you are one of my favourites, as this is a part of my business I put more effort into than anything else. This is also the time of giving, and our friends at Body Health are just as thankful for you guys as I am, but they're stepping it up a notch. Body Health is giving away a pack of six Perfect Amino tablets and a pack of six Perfect Amino XP tubs to two lucky listeners in the month of December. To enter, all you need to do is visit tinamuir.com forward slash Christmas giveaway and enter your email address. I'll announce the winners in January and get the products right to you. You can also use coupon code TINA10 for 10% off at bodyhealth.com if you don't want to wait. Now, for those of you who are first-time listeners, Body Health was one of my secrets to success as a 236 marathoner, as it helped me recover so much faster in heavy training. And as for injuries, it sped up healing for those a lot faster too. Enter to win at tinamuir.com forward slash Christmas giveaway before December 31st. Okay, David, just four more questions for you, starting with a unique nutrition, either a tip or something that you do um, that is kind of different, if there is something yeah, different. Yeah, let's see. Uh, <laughs> I suppose breakfast. Breakfast, I suppose, for the last, oh, I don't know, six, seven years, I suppose for breakfast I've been having an organic porridge uh-huh. with um, manuka honey, blueberries, pumpkin seeds, and cinnamon flakes. Cinnamon okay. flakes, I, I love because cinnamon, cinnamon flakes, flakes no, as cinnamon opposed flakes. to cinnamon powder. Yeah, cinnamon yeah. flakes. Mm. And uh, yeah, I like that because cinnamon's great for uh, yeah. for the stomach and for, for nerves or for whatever, where yeah. if you're having a, an off day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, and, I, and, and definitely matcha tea. I'm, I'm just. Oh, uh, no. Oh, no, I don't yeah, like I, the taste of that. I, oh, like, I don't like the taste, but that's that's what honey's there for. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I, I'm a fan of matcha tea. Yeah. I and I only started drinking that. coffee. <laughs> the, the, the coffee thing, I, only, I actually only came to coffee this year. Mm. I never drank coffee before or tea. It was always peppermint tea for me for the last well, uh, God knows how what, many years. What provoked you to uh, start on the coffee then? Um, I, suppose, <laughs> I suppose business uh, provoked me. I suppose I was having a Skype with one of the shareholders and he was drinking coffee. And I asked him, you, you drink a lot of coffee. And, and he, he basically said, uh, oh, I can't do, start a day without a coffee. And I was impressed by this by this businessman. I won't give name any names. So I kind of got, well, if this guy's drinking a cup of coffee, I'm going to do the same. <laughs> okay. <But yeah. laughs> All right. Well, thank you for sharing. What about a running for real moment, a moment that only runners will understand? Runners understand. Uh, I suppose I consider myself, as I said, a kind of a shy, introverted guy. So I, much as I would love to, don't get me wrong, I really would. Uh, I, I don't run part of a running group. I, I never have. And I've been running, oh, good, donkey's years, uh, which, don- sorry, donkey's year, a long time. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I run solo. And so it's, I suppose it's something I just like doing. I've never run with anybody else unless it's for a business. And I don't like saying that um, unless it's research. I just like going out on my own and... I do see on my long runs on a Sunday and I'm a little bit envious when I see all the running groups passing me by and the, the camaraderie between them all and the chats. And well, I've never taken that leap yet to, to join a running group. Oh, you I'm have to do a, it now. I, this should be I your do. time to I, commit. It is. And everybody keeps asking me to go because you're running a, a wearable safety company at Runners. You should, just, you should be in amongst the runners, yeah. you know, talking about an angel. But maybe it's just something I haven't done yet. I've always run solo. It is scary. So, it is scary to yeah, go. Yeah, it yeah. is. And I suppose maybe I don't want to join a group with, with people who are faster than me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when, you're just against, when you're just against yourself, 
that's great. But when you go into a club and you see other guys or girls and they're faster than you, you're like, oh, okay. No, like, but, legitimate. I, and I bet you many people will understand that because it's it is scary, and I know that a lot of our listeners feel that way. What about a high moment for you? In your um, yeah, I suppose I did the Dublin rock and roll there a few months ago, and my mother wasn't well, and uh, she had a stroke early in the year, um, and I didn't expect her to come to one of my races, and. She made it for, down to this race, but she didn't tell me. But they closed all the roads in Dublin. They should have. Should, Dublin City was closed for this race. Um, and I didn't think she was coming. And the kids were there and Ellen was there and I was fine. But she, I came over the finish line and she, she was ringing me and saying she was in the Phoenix Park in Dublin and she couldn't see me. So um, she came down to the finish line and it was all over. But uh, I suppose that was a high moment, I suppose, for me because my mother wasn't well and she came to one of our races. And, and it wasn't an easy task for it to come down to one of these races when, when a city is shut and you have to leave your car miles away and then you have to walk after an illness. So that was one of them. I suppose another high was, which was a, started out as a low, I was running a marathon and uh, uh, halfway through it, uh, I came off a curb badly and twisted my knee. And I was at a point in the race, funny enough, where I could see my house. So I could say, okay, I'm going to head home now and have mm-hmm. the bath and leave it at that but I knew uh, I knew the kids and I knew Ellen were at the finish line waiting and I said if I this isn't the right thing to do I know I'm not and I can't carry on but I can walk or I can jog so I had that moment of um you know the crossroads go left or go right and I decided to go right and come and do another 13 miles while jogging um and painful 13 miles but I'm glad I did it I wasn't mm-hmm. happy. You're never happy about your time when something like that happens in a marathon. But, you know, I was happy I did it because even though I knew my wife and kids were waiting for me at the finish line, so I wasn't going to just ring up the back of the house saying, I'm here now, I've, I've essentially stopped. And, and then you see it as a different perspective as a runner. Mm. It's all great when you're running fast and, and you're, you're, you're doing your personal best and you're concentrating on your, on your form and your stride. But when something like that happens, you know, you see it differently. You see people cheering differently. You, your runners beside you, you know, egging you on. You know, you just see it as a, a different perspective. Yeah. So that was kind of that was yeah. kind of a high uh, that should have been a low. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that was, that was a bit of an eye opener. No, it made great. me think about racing in the future as well, running against other people or seeing people who were, who had suffered or were slowing down themselves. Um, so yeah, that was that was another one I'd say. No, that's great. Thank you so much. And finally, what do you tell yourself when you're standing on the start line? Oh yeah, that's an easy one. Uh, David, don't start out too fast. Uh, <laughs> that is a bad habit. I just get just hung up on the whole thing. And when I'm at the start and I'm at the front, just that's it. Game over. I'm saying it, it could be a, a 1K race. In my mind, I'm just sprinting in the beginning and I have to train myself not to run fast at the start. And I always, always do. And also the hills. I love hills. So I, I say the hills are your domain. So mm-hmm. I always go on the hills. And I found that actually recently in training, I've done a lot more hill training as opposed to say twice a week. I'm, I'm doing as much as I can now. And at a recent race, there was this challenging hill that I run the previous year and we all struggled to get up it. It was towards the end of the race. And I seemed to go up it at ease That's and great. pass out a few people on the hill. And I put it down to this constant loop of this mammoth hill that I do here in Cork. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I like hills. And, and, and my advice to myself is stop running too fast in the beginning because you pay for it. Yep, so, yeah, you, you certainly will. Okay, finally, I ask my guests to send me a photo of them in a power pose, how you would stand on the start line to build your confidence. Um, will you send us your power pose? Absolutely. No okay. question about that. Great. Yeah, yeah. Well, David, thank you so much. This was so informative. Um, as I mentioned thank you. to the listeners, I really, really encourage you to go to Run Angel and look into one of these, you know, a great gift, as I mentioned. And if you go to the Run Angel website, uh, that's runangel.com and you use coupon code running for real, that's the number four, not the word. Uh, running for real you can get 10 percent off there um i really would recommend it i'll put lots of links in the show notes and um david anything else you would like to say of uh, where people can find you yeah no that's no no i'm delighted thanks a million tina for the interview i really appreciate that um yeah absolutely we have a facebook page instagram page we have an ambassador program that we're rolling out throughout the world at the moment so it's we have this kind of community of runners so anybody who's interested who wants to uh by all means drop me a mail to hello with runangel.com. I say we're just trying to build up a community of runners speaking about safety. Okay. So that'd be great. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much for all that you're doing to help make this world a safer and better place for runners. Thanks so much. No problem. Thanks, Miltina. 
Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is a bit of a unique episode. We have said thank you to David. Great episode, full of lots of helpful advice. And as I mentioned, I do have a run angel um, and I absolutely love it. I feel especially safe with it right now as I'm pregnancy, even more so. But um, definitely other times as well, I will be using this every time in the future just to give you that peace of mind. So I guess beginning, Run Angel is one of the first products I do recommend as a gift to put on your list. But you can find everything David and I talked about in the show notes at tinamuir.com forward slash episode 37. So now, as I mentioned, we are going to go on to a kind of gift guide for runners. And I'm going to start that now and kind of give you, I think, about 25 or 26, which is a lot of product ideas, but they're all of different price ranges. That's the reason I wanted to do it, because I didn't want to just give, you know, really expensive ones or really cheap stocking filler ones, but kind of all ranges. And like I said, if you do not want to listen, you do not have to. Next week, we have Emma Coburn, which is a pretty big one um, to a lot for me to get her on the podcast. She doesn't do that many interviews, but she's the 2017 world champion in steeplechase. Those of you who are in the US will remember that historic race with her and Courtney, who went 1-2 in the steeplechase. It was just an amazing moment for American running. I think she was um, the first American woman uh, in the steeplechase in any world championship or Olympic to win gold. So good interview next week coming. Make sure you check that one out, but let's get on with the gift guide. Okay, so I would like to start with something that is going to help us in everyday situations. It's something that you might think, why am I really putting this on the list? Do I really have to stoop to this level? But it is socks. You know, we we do need running socks. As much as we can pretend that we can just wear our lovely cotton ones and they won't bother us, a good pair of running socks can make such a big difference. And for me, the ones I have really enjoyed over the last few years are features. Now, that's not spelt the usual way of spelling features, but spelt F E E. T-U-R-E-S. So features, get it? Uh, I thought that was quite clever. But um, they are great socks, really, really good for runners. They have, you know, put all the parts in the right places to make it so that you don't chafe. They don't rub. And I just absolutely love them. Now, there's plenty of brands out there when it comes to socks, but features are definitely my favorite. So I would recommend those as a great little stocking filler that you can kind of put into the runner you love stocking or just give them a little extra gift that will really make their day. And it's one of those things we're not going to buy ourselves, but it can be a great gift. Now, my second recommendation is a big one. And I get that this comes with a hefty price tag, but if you are really dedicated to your training, really want to do the best you can, or if you are injury prone and just cannot seem to get a break, um, a lip to go, you know, I have one, I have talked about it many times. I paid for mine myself. I did not get it free. And it was so worth the investment. It is just such a great tool, especially if you are injured. It is a big purchase. I realize that, but it just gives back so much more, especially when you cannot run. It will help you keep your fitness. There has been research studies that have shown most people who train with Elliptigo, even if they aren't running, manage to maintain almost all of their fitness. And a lot of these people they used in the studies did PRs very quickly after getting back into running because it really gets you to fitness as much as running can do or as close to running as you could possibly do while you're injured. So I know the Elliptigo is a big purchase, but in my opinion, it is well worth it. So if you have the capability and it is something you have been thinking about, definitely make the choice to pick that up this Christmas or this holiday season. Now, as I mentioned, Run Angel is another good alternative, so I'm not going to talk about that. And the following one is actually another of the companies that I have talked about a lot lately, but this is for a runner, I would say, marathon training. Now, you've heard me talk about UCAN in the past. I always used it for my fueling in marathons. I relied on it so much. I didn't take any gels, didn't take anything else, felt completely confident with UCAN in my races. But as you know, right now, I'm not really in a state to be racing marathons. And, um, you know, it's not really the ideal time to be kind of thinking about taking down, um, 
liquids or shakes and things. I mean, as much as I could. For me, I'm not as, I don't enjoy shakes and drinks as much as I enjoy eating foods. I love textures. So um, I'd rather not have drinks unless they're actually doing a purpose, which they do for running. So if you're training for a marathon, you already know all the details about Generation You Can. But one thing I'm going to recommend is You Can bars. Now, I have one of these every morning. They are absolutely wonderful. You can leave them you know, in your car, they won't go all nasty. You can kind of spit them in your bag anywhere, anytime. When you have that busy, hectic life, these you can bars are fantastic. I absolutely love them and they taste good too, especially the chocolate peanut butter flavor. That's definitely my favorite. So if I was going to recommend a flavor, it would be that. And as I mentioned, I'm still using them every day right now. That's how great they are. They're perfect for before a run. They're perfect after a run. They don't upset your stomach as with Generation You Can. And best of all, you guys, if you use coupon code running for real, that's the number four, running for real, you will get 15% off at generationyoucan.com. Now, what is next? Um, for runners who love their stats. Now, <laughs> that hits most runners listening to this podcast. I know I am unfortunately one of those people who has to hit the zero zero on a distance um, and will, you know, run around the garden or just that few steps beyond the house just to reach that exact number. And for that reason, I absolutely love my Garmin Forerunner 235. Now, there are plenty of higher level Garmins. There's plenty of other watches you could use out there, but I absolutely love this one. It's just functional. It's sleek. It doesn't weigh too much. It fits nicely on my wrist. I could go on about this one all day. And as much as those bigger, you know, better models are probably going to give you some extra benefits for most people, the Forerunner 235 has everything you need. And even if you are trusting me and using hashtag no watch me, if you don't know what that is, make sure you again, join that Facebook community of mine, the running for real superstars, you will soon come to understand. But even if you are a no watch me runner, you know, it's still great to have that stat, the stats there kind of adding you up. And I love looking at the monthly totals or the weekly totals. Those are just so much fun to kind of look at and, um, you know, keep track of as you go through your training. And it really helps you to kind of appreciate what you've done to get to this point, especially when you go into a race and you can go through your Garmin and see all those things that are done. So that's the Garmin Forerunner 235. Now, before I go on to the next one, I want to just mention that all of these right here are in a blog post that is on my website. It went live at the end of November. And you can find this by going to tinamuir.com forward slash 2017, the number 2017, 2017 gift guide. And that will take you straight here and it will, you'll be able to find them all on paper or on computer, I guess. Uh, and they will be all my recommendations and links directly to those products. So make sure you go check that out. If you are running right now and just kind of listening for ideas and don't really have a pen and paper to write down all these gifts that you would want out of the ones I select. The next one is a bit of a weird one. Now I have to bear with me on this one. And um, it's really going to be something that could make a difference in your life, but you probably haven't thought about it yet. Now runners, we tend to want to get the most out of our training and we really try to hone in on our nutrition when we are putting our training first. And we try and make the little things that we can easier so that we can, you know, get the right foods and not have to worry about eating foods that are going to sabotage our training. Now, the one thing that I would recommend for runners who want to do this more than anything else is to purchase, <laughs> wait for it, an Ikea silicon baking sheet. Now you might think that's completely random and I'm saying you can get any baking sheet really, but I found this Ikea one. It's a nice pink one for those men out there. Um, it's a nice pink one and it's got some swirls on it, but it's absolutely wonderful. Um, you know, I don't know if any of you have ever cooked an egg bake where you kind of mix up some eggs, kind of like a frittata, I guess. Uh, I call it an egg bake, but you uh, mix up, you know, 10 to 15 egg eggs with some vegetables or maybe some meat and sausage or whatever. Put it in the oven um, for about 30 to 45 minutes and it leaves you this ginormous, basically, uh, frittata or omelette or whatever you want to call it. And you can just put that in your fridge and kind of eat it throughout the week. It's a great breakfast idea. Now, those typically, when you put them in the pan, I usually use a nine by 13 pan, 
they stick like nothing else. You leave half of the egg bake on the pan if you do end up using that. But if you use one of these silicon baking sheets, it just lifts right off. It's amazing. You can use it for cookies. You can use it for chicken. You can use it for so many things but it just completely stops all the nastiness getting stuck to your pans. So it makes cleaning so easy because all you need to do is wipe up the silicon sheet and then you're good to go. I love it. So it only costs $5. That's so a nice cheap one, but it's something that saves time. You're helping the environment because you're not using parchment paper and it's just great. So you can find that at your local Ikea and uh, it's one that's a bit random, but once you get one, you will definitely see why I love it. Next one I'm going to mention uh, is V, who you have heard of as the sponsor of this episode. I won't talk about them too much right now. You have met V in this episode. Um, but generally, just when I was an elite, I, I rarely listened to music because I wanted to kind of think about what I was doing. If I was easy running, I wanted to make sure I was easy running. I wanted to, if I was in a workout, I wanted to listen to what I was doing, make sure I was running the right effort. And I was just kind of like planning out my day a lot of the time. But now I love to listen to music. I love to listen to podcasts. And I know many of you do. So if that is the case, um, these headphones that come with V are absolutely fantastic. Really, really good. Um, some of the best ones that I've had. And if those of you who need the you know, personal training, the accountability, you struggle with motivation, you know, the V herself is just great. And you, there's so many features to it now. They are constantly adding to her like capabilities and she talks to you like a normal person. It's not like a, hello, my name is, it's a very like natural and normal kind of conversation and it's really enjoyable. So if you do enjoy listening to music, I mean, I love iHeartRadio, um, to listen to various things and sometimes even the Disney channel and Pandora. But, um, if you do enjoy listening to music, this is definitely a great option for you to have the music right there, but also have the encouragement and the support if you need that. So you can find out more and enter for a giveaway at getv.com. That's G-E-T-V-I.com forward slash running for real. And that will take you to a giveaway so you can hopefully enter to win one. Now let's get on to some reading materials because we are runners and we love a good book, don't we? So I've read so many books this year. Every time a podcast guest has a book, I make sure I read the entire thing cover to cover. That is where I get a lot of my very direct questions. And that is where we can really tell who actually knows their book, because if they give me good answers and they know what they've written about, they're able to kind of give the most in-depth answers because they clearly have researched the topic. Now, it's hard to narrow down some books, but I thought I would give you three this time because um, these are the three that kind of stick with me, although one you will hear I have not actually read, but it is the next one I'm excited for. Um, but the first two address the psychological side of things. Now, we as runners, we can be head cases. We know that, we accept that, and we're used to that. But I wanted to give two books that have really changed things for me. They've changed things for other people, and I refer them all the time. The first one is Brave Athlete, Calm the F Down. Now, you will hear if you purchase the podcast series in 2018, that is the mental training, you will hear from Simon and Leslie, who are the authors of that book, and you will get to hear a lot of the good information they had from the book. But this one is just completely different to any other psychology book I have found. They Most ones can be really kind of intense and just kind of like, here's the information, um, here's what you need to know, this is what you're doing. And it's very much like the one I'm going to mention in a minute, but this one is the complete opposite. Of course, there's a the knowledge and they have all the information in there, but this one is like talking to a friend, that kind of friend who curses a lot and uh, has, has to kind of watch their tongue because they're so loud. Um, that is definitely this book through Simon and Leslie, and they just don't care. They are telling you the truth. They're telling you how it is. But you guys, I know, appreciate that because you love running for real. You love us being real. And this book has all the information you need, but put in a way that is not kind of tiptoeing around you, giving you the fluffy stuff. It is absolutely to the point. This is what you do. This is why you do it. And I just thought it was great. 
they admit that we are crazy, they admit that we do silly things and they really kind of make you feel like you're not alone. So I absolutely love that. That's called Brave Athlete, Calm the F Down. And uh, yes, the language in the title kind of tells you what kind of book you are in for right there, but I definitely would recommend that one. Now, the next one is more of a traditional psychology book. Um, And this is for those runners who get ridiculously nervous before races. Now, Brave Athlete kind of explains why we put this pressure and expectation on ourselves. But Mindset Manifesto by Brett McCabe, who I have had on this podcast, so hopefully you have heard of him. Um, this book is just really great for calming you down. It makes you realize how over the top you are being with your expectations or this pressure you're putting on yourself. If you find you get nervous before races, read this book. It will change your life and it is a good one to keep on hand. And if you do not want to listen to this, uh, to purchase this book, make sure you go back and listen to that podcast episode with Dr. Brett McKay, but there will be information in the show notes about that episode. So make sure you go back and find it. The third book I would recommend is by Susan Latke. And, um, Susan is an inspiration herself. Um, And uh, this book is about friendship. Um, It is about kind of a journey. And I will be honest with you, I have not actually finished this book. But that is, as I mentioned, I have had so many podcasts this year that I haven't had a chance to sit down and read a book for pleasure. It's more been for purpose. So this book I wanted to save for this holiday period where I can actually read it and enjoy it and kind of take my time with it. But I've heard so many good things about this. It's inspiring, it's funny, and she's just very real. So this is for the runner who just loves to be around friendship and loves to be around other people and go on these adventures. So make sure you check that one out. Another fantastic book. All right, next on the list is for those of you who are in the middle of the slog, in the middle of the grind your way through you're struggling your way and you're just wondering if you're going to make it to race day because you just feel so exhausted and just like you can't continue at this rate now you've heard me mention body health perfect amino they are the sponsors of this show i'm just going to go over this briefly because you have heard enough about them but for me this was a game changer keeping me recovered it helped me get over things quicker i absolutely loved my body health perfect amino you can find links to that all over the place but if you use coupon code tina10 you will get 10% off at bodyhealth.com so make sure you give it a try if you are getting it for someone else and they have been talking about how tired they've been feeling what more could you give someone that you care about other than kind of helping them to feel better about their training when you know how much running means to them the next one i'm not going to give you a specific or maybe i will but you can kind of go in your own direction with this one. Now, something who, which is really important for this time of year is having a good winter running jacket. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, your Columbia or your North Face jacket that's going to keep you warm in the in the coldest of weather. I'm talking a good running jacket. Now, it needs to be windproof for sure. It needs to be waterproof or water resistant. Probably water resistant because if you have it waterproof, it tends to not let air out which tends to get you all sweaty, so you kind of get hot anyway. But there are plenty of good ones out there. They are expensive. You know, it does cost a lot to buy a good winter jacket, but it is well worth it. Let me just say that. Like, I have a few of those winter jackets, and I wear them every day. You can wear them with just a tank top underneath if it's not that cold out. You can wear them with another long sleeve. They are just fantastic. Now, the one I really like is the Socony Vita Run jacket, but there's obviously other brands if you prefer that you can use and those will give you good options too. So that's another one to check out. And my next one is another running apparel item. You might be a bit shocked to hear this one, but I'm going to suggest to you the Lululemon Enlight Sports Bra. Now, I've been a runner for 14 years and I can honestly say to you, I have never loved a single product as much as I love this sports bra. Well, I have been using all kinds of sports bras from all kinds of brands my whole running life, but this one is amazing. Now, it does come with a rather hefty price tag, and you're probably going to be shocked when you see how much it costs. But let me just tell you, it is so worth every penny. I have bought two of them. I'm planning to buy more of them. And yes, they are worth that kind of money, but it does not chafe. It does not 
uh, rub, it doesn't move, it doesn't feel uncomfortable, it doesn't squish. It is just so damn comfortable. I can't even begin to describe to you, especially if you are a runner with a larger chest. This one is a game changer and I cannot recommend it enough. That's the Lululemon in light sports bra. Now, the next one I thought would be a good one for you to suggest. I do have one of these and I love it. And it has been so helpful for me to preventing kind of backache and keeping my body nice and loose. Although I will admit to you that now I am pregnant, I do find it kind of hard (laughs) to get up of the sitting position, but I feel like I have an excuse with that one. But many of you kind of talk to me about how you worry about your hip flexors getting tight, your hamstrings getting tight, how you spend too much time sitting, and you just worry about what effect it is having on your running. Now, I had always been kind of skeptical of standing desks because I hate standing. I like sitting. I don't mind walking, but I just always feel like standing is just uncomfortable. However, that was because I was pretty good at getting up and moving around. But once I got this desk, I actually realized how little I actually was moving around and um, how much better I felt when I was standing up for parts of the day. My body felt better. I felt better on my runs and it's just a great option. So this is the, I have the Varidesk, V-A-R-I, Desk Pro Plus, and it is one that you can put on any table. You can take it off again. It raises to different heights. So you can obviously have different chairs at different times. I actually got their seat with it, which I love. It's kind of like having a medicine, uh, not a medicine ball. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's, a, it's like having a Swiss ball to go along with it. Kind of makes you engage your core to just sit there or somewhat sit there. You're kind of like perching. Um, but I really love the Varidesk. I found it really helpful for keeping my posture correct. And if you are someone who is worried about your hip flexors or worried about how much time you're sitting and you want to think about your long-term health, the Varidesk may very well be a good option for you to kind of consider because it is just such a great tool that we can use day to day without having to actually think about it because you're just getting on with your work. You know, it's not like you're saying I'm going out for a run. You're just standing there doing your work. So you're distracted. So Varidesk Pro Plus is the one that I have and it is a great option. Now, the next one, I have to admit, I have not used it myself, but it is something that I've heard so many wonderful things about. Um, and it's a company who really seems to be doing things in the right direction. Now, as I've mentioned a few times so far, um, getting your nutrition right is absolutely key to running well. But once again, you know, life is busy. It seems so much easier to just grab some fast food on the way home, um, especially when you've got to think about what are we going to cook? What have I got to buy? What have I got to do this? I don't have time or energy. Just too much there, isn't it? But um, HelloFresh is a company, um, this is in the US, I'm not sure if they are worldwide, but if they are in other countries, um, or there may be other options in other countries, I know there definitely is in the UK and in Australia, but you may find something that's in your country that may be kind of an alternative. But HelloFresh, um, it is... It varies with prices, but from what I can tell, it's about $10 for a meal for two. Now, they deliver you a chill box each week with a pre-portioned ingredients for two to four meals and a recipe card explaining how to do it. Now, you can pick which recipes you want. It's easy. And they like restaurant quality meals. They look really, really good. Everything on there just looks like something I would love to have in a restaurant. So really, really good options here. If you are someone who struggles to make time to have meals and you don't work from home, which I am fortunate enough to do, then this might be a great option for someone you love or for your loved ones as a gift to yourself to kind of make sure that you guys are looking after your own bodies and your health and your nutrition. Now, runners love their clothes, don't we? We love our puns. We love our silly little stuff that makes us just feel like more a part of the community. I mean, that's why I created Running for Real Superstars after all. But there's one company that's come up in the last few years by a wonderful lady, and it's really been great to see how much she's grown and how big this company has become. And it's just all based on kind of runner clothes and runner funny phrases. So for those of you who haven't heard of Sarah Marie Design Studio, what have you been doing? (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. But it really does you know, kind of change the way we look at running clothes. And I think you're absolutely going to love them, especially if you're a woman. 
Uh, but there is a lot of stuff on there for men. And Sarah Marie is just fantastic with her designs. And it's just really fun. It's just something that makes you feel proud to be a runner. And it's just exciting to see these running companies that are doing so well. And they're just individual people, you know, genuine people who deserve to do well. So you can find out more about Sarah Marie Designs on her website. Make sure you check it out because it's such a funny thing to have and a fun thing to have in your stocking or just something, a little gift you can get the runner in your life. The next thing, speaking of runner in your life, if you are a runner or you know a runner who loves to try new things, and that's most of us, isn't it? A company I really recommend. I love just the whole personality behind the company. When I found out I was pregnant, they sent me a t-shirt just to say um, kind of congratulations. And it said running for two on it. And it was just a a maternity shirt. Now, I didn't ask them to do this. I haven't had stride boxes, but they just wanted to do that because they are just such a great company. So um, stride box is another company. What you get is every month you will get a box sent to you in the mail. It's a nice, decent sized box, but it's not too massive that it has to be kind of awkwardly uh, left for you. But Every month they'll send you products from new companies. So these are companies that are just trying to break their way into the market or they're just kind of testing things. So they're literally people like you and I who are following a dream, giving the running world something that they have struggled with or that that has bothered them, a problem they have fixed. And you will see that there's just so many great little ideas in here, so many good things to try, especially if you're new in the running world, you know, that you can try all these things and see what works for you. It's a subscription service, so it's a perfect gift to buy someone because you can just get them a few months and then they can see if they want to continue. But you get all kinds of stuff, you know, granolas, light reflecting armbands, bandanas, recovery products, hydration products, anti-chafe, all kinds of stuff. And there's so much variety in this box. I think it's just going to really be something that will resonate with you if you love to try new things. So that is Stridebox. Now, next, this is something if someone has recently run a PB, a PR, or just had a good race recently, we as runners love to cherish those memories, kind of reflect over them because let's be real, guys, those moments don't happen very often as much as we wish we could run a PR every weekend or we wish we could have a great race all the time. It just doesn't happen that often. And actually, now I say that it's probably a good thing that we don't have it very often because it means so much to you. But when it does mean a lot to you and this has been like a dream race or just a race that you've worked so hard for, one of the best things you can do is to see something that reminds you of what you did. I mean, I have a photo of me um, running in the World Half Marathon Championships along with my Great Britain uh, vest or jersey and my bibs uh, hanging right above me now. I can see it right this second. And it's just such a nice reminder that you did accomplish that. You accomplished something that you set out to do. So there's two kind of ways you can go about this. There is a company called Gone For A Run who has hundreds of amazing products on there for the runner in your life to get something unique. Now, I would recommend them if you are going to look for something kind of unique and cool. And they have the metal hangers, which, you know, a lot of runners love. Um, But the other thing you could do is just buy a frame, you know, a simple frame that has about three slots in it. You can put the bib in one and you can put two different photos, maybe one from the finish line and one from during the race. And if you can get it engraved, even better, put it, put their time on there. They want to put their medal in there. There's, you maybe need another spot, but just kind of think about the runner in your life and, and how they are and their personality, but something like that, that they can hang on their wall, see it every day as they walk past it and just feel that pride. It's just going to be such a good feeling for them. Um, especially if it is a race that they've worked for, for a very long time and overcome a lot of obstacles. So that's just another idea. As I said, you can use gone for a run, but you could also just buy a frame from somewhere else and just kind of make it your own, be creative with it. And that would mean so much more because it would be a homemade gift. All right, next one. So we all know Shalane Flanagan won the New York Marathon by now. Incredible for so many people, for women, for America, for just showing that if you have your mind to something and you are determined enough, you will accomplish it at some point. I mean, her reaction at the finish line was just pure proof that she has worked so hard to get that. And we know how that feels. But this isn't about that. This is about her cookbook, uh, which she wrote with Elise Kopecky, who is going to be on the podcast soon. 
And they made this cookbook called Run Fast, Eat Slow. I got it a year ago. It was on my gift guide a year ago. And I have loved this book. It has been amazing. It is so helpful for giving you, you know, snacks and meals and recipes that you can just follow with simple ingredients. They're not that complicated to make. And they have been designed with runners in mind. This is the food Shalane eats herself. This is the food food Elise and her have worked really hard on making. They're actually coming up with a second book. But for now, if you have a runner in your life or you want a cookbook and you want to try and eat better in 2018, Run Fast, Eat Slow absolutely is the best choice you can make. Now, I just want to remind you guys one more time that um, everything I talk about today, there is a blog post to go along with this on my website, tinamuir.com. And you can find more information about each product. You can find a link to each product. And actually, guys, if you click on my link in that post, you actually give me a bit of a kickback from our friends at Amazon for a lot of them. So I would really appreciate if you do use those links. If you don't, no problem. It just gives you some more information. I will just remind you because unless you're running along right now or doing chores right now, writing a list, then um, chances are you probably want something to refer to afterwards. Now, I hope you don't mind that I do a bit of self-promotion here. Um, I have recently come out with uh, Running For Real apparel, mugs and uh, hats. Now, obviously, as I just mentioned, you can support me by using my links, but you can also support me by purchasing either a T-shirt, a tank, uh, the tank are for women, the sleeveless vests are for men. Uh, They say running for real on them. There's caps, as I mentioned. They're all performance. They're all moisture wicking. They all feel really nice. It's just a nice material. I took a lot of time making sure that these were the right products that I wanted to sell, that I was proud to sell. And, you know, it helps spread the word about this community. Um, I'm so excited for how they turned out. And if you wear them, you know, other people might see that, you know, see that logo and think, oh, what's running for real? I'm going to check that out. So if you want to help me, this will make a huge difference to me by going to the website, tinamuir.com. You can click on the shop button and you can find all the options for running for real apparel, vests and tanks, as I mentioned, uh, caps and mugs, just what works for you. Just they're not that expensive, something you can give as a little stocking filler or just something that you can show your support to the running for real community, show how much you know, many of you email me and say how much you appreciate this, these podcasts. Well, you wearing those shirts just goes such a long way to helping to grow it because other people will look it up. So I am, this is my self-promotion thing. I hope you don't mind me adding something in here, but I really hope you will consider some running for real apparel on your Christmas list, on your Hanukkah list, on your gift guide this year. All right. One that is for my injured runners friends or my friends who struggle with arch pain or plantar fasciitis. This is called the O ball, the OH ball. Now I've been very lucky that I haven't really had any running, any foot issues during my running career. I was pretty lucky to just kind of dodge it for the most part, but I have noticed actually as I've been pregnant, I've been getting a little more arch um, pain, but maybe that's from my arches collapsing, which I have heard happens in pregnancy, or maybe I'm just running a little bit strange with, um, the extra weight and just kind of the way that, uh, I'm not able to move how I did before. Now, when I first came across this product, I have to admit, I thought it was a bit silly. I was like, why do you need it? Um, because it basically is a round ball that you can put in the freezer and it has some string attached to it. Now at the time I thought, well, can't you just use a golf ball or can't you just use a water bottle? But again, I've never really had foot issues. So I um, gave it a try. And I have to say, it gets into spots that golf balls can't, that frozen water bottles can't. And the best thing about it is that those string, uh, the string that I mentioned, it holds it in place. When you try and use a golf ball on the arch of your foot, it just slides off all over the place. It just disappears. This ball allows you to put targeted pressure on the areas that are tight. You can roll it out and it's just really good, especially as I said, you can put it in the freezer and it's got a nice little tub so you don't have to um, put your football into the freezer with your food. (laughs) So there's a nice little tub you can keep it in if you want to. Now, I really, really like the Oval. As I said, I haven't had that many foot issues, but if you have, um, my husband, Steve, said it is actually a great product as well. He's been using it a lot. So if you had have, have had foot issues, that is definitely one for you to check out. 
Now the next one uh, is sunglasses. Now I get that it's winter and you might be thinking um, sunglasses, it's the winter, I don't need sunglasses. Unless you're in Australia of course, in which case it's definitely the right time. But at this time of the year, for well, for me at least, it feels like the sunlight is so much brighter, or at least the glare is worse, especially in the mornings. Maybe that's just because, you know, it starts uh, getting light a lot later. But I find running with sunglasses in the winter is even better than running with sunglasses in the summer. And it just helps so much. It stops you from kind of cringing up your face. Um, and uh that tension that kind of comes with scrunching up your face while you're running. You're going to have a relaxed face. You're not going to have to worry about glare getting you in your eyes. So you miss a car and as you cross the road or whatever, it's really, really helpful. Now I have Oakley fast jackets. I absolutely love mine. I'm very happy with them, but I want to tell you guys today within my running for real superstars community, they have mentioned that gooder G O O D R. So that's G O O D R sunglasses are the ones to go for. Now I haven't personally tried these, but the community was so adamant that these are the best sunglasses. So maybe you want to check those ones out. Again, I will have links to them in that blog post that comes along with this interview. So make sure you go check that out on my website. So that's good as sunglasses. I have Oakley. I love them, but either way, a good pair of running sunglasses is going to go a long way for you. Now, another stocking stuffer that any runner needs really is a road ID. This was one of the most common um, suggestions that came up within my running community. And it can be a lifesaver, <laughs> literally a lifesaver, especially if you have any allergies or anything, any medical issues that could put you in danger. Now, what it is, is you get like a, a wristband, um, kind of like the Livestrong ones that were <laughs> in fashion maybe 10 years ago. And um, it's a bit thicker than that. You can actually get other materials, but that was that's the one that I have. And on it, it has a little square that has some printed information about you, your name, your emergency contacts, any known allergies or issues that you have. And you can also put a quote on there, like maybe your favorite quote, something that you kind of live by. And it's something that we kind of think to ourselves, oh, I don't need that. But then if you think about it, it can happen to anyone. We can, any of us can be in danger And this will just make it so that if something does happen to you, um, we do put ourselves, you know, in quite high intensity states sometimes, which is dangerous. Um, If someone does find you, they can get help immediately. They can let your loved ones know. And, uh, you know, it just never does any harm to be prepared. So a road ID is another huge one that is so important for runners. Now, this wouldn't be a gift guide from Tina without me mentioning the Saucony bullet shorts or tights. Now, I know I harp on about these. I've talked about them for years. I absolutely cannot say enough positive stuff about them. But even now, being pregnant, I these are the only shorts I've been wearing because they, they fit well. They have those lovely little pockets. If you're in training for a marathon, the, these little uh, bottles fit perfectly in them. You won't even notice they're there. You can practice your running nutrition. They don't bounce. These these tights, these shorts are amazing. Amazing. The Saucony Bullet Shorts are my favorite Saucony product of all time. Um, They don't ride up your legs, which I know is a huge concern for many people. And they're just fantastic. So make sure you check out the Saucony Bullet Shorts. All right, I have just a few more for you guys. Um, One which is for a runner who maybe has a lot to carry (laughs) or an organized runner. Um, I have to admit, when I first saw these come on the market, I kind of laughed a little bit, wondering why someone would need them. But actually, now I completely understand and I now I chafe all the time and now I um, am not running the way I used to and be so serious about things. I am using this all the time. I love to listen to music and podcasts and I see how these just make such a big difference because you don't have to carry things in your hands or in your pockets bouncing around. So this is a flip belt. You can put almost anything you want in there. They're not that expensive. They don't move around. And you can just carry things that you need for your runs, especially if you're out on a long run. And um, they're just great. I really, really enjoy using my flip belt. And uh, hopefully you guys will continue to use it. And then let me know. This was another popular one within the Running For Real community. And you might find it helpful too. You can find a link to flip belt on my website with everything else. 
Now, the final one I have is one that should make us all smile. Um, on the gift guide, I'm saying it's for the runner you love the most. So you can hint, hint to your loved ones that this is something you need. But even though this might sound a bit of a silly one, it is so important. Um, and it's a sports massage. You know, massages always feel like these indulgences that we shouldn't really have and we shouldn't really need. But actually, a sports massage can go a long way for a runner. It can get rid of all those tight spots, all those areas that have been bothering you. It can prevent injuries because you get rid of those little niggles before they turn into anything. When I was heavy training, I would pay for a massage once a week. That's how important it was. But I know that runners tend to be very selfless and think we don't deserve that. But if you get this for the runner in your life, it's just going to make their running, at least for a few weeks, it feels so much better. And they might feel a bit sore or a bit kind of beat up for a few days, but it is just such a good thing to do. And um, if you can find a well-recommended masseuse in your area, it's just that bit of TLC that will make you feel much happier. So I would recommend a sports massage as the final thing in my gift guide. All right, so I'm wrapping up here. Hope this has been helpful for you. Um, you know, really good suggestions here from my community and the ones that I love the most. Um, these products are all things I recommend and uh, I really hope that you will enjoy them too. Uh, I'd love to hear if you do purchase some of them or do ask for some of them and get them what you think. You can always tweet at me at Tina Muir. You can find the Running For Real Superstars that I've mentioned. If you have not already joined, it is time. Uh, search Running For Real Superstars on Facebook. You will find us and I hope you will join us on there. And then finally, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, a wonderful rest of your week. Next week, we will be talking to Emma Coburn. Yes, pretty big deal there. So make sure you don't miss that one next week. Um, she is the world champion in the steeplechase, the first American to ever win an Olympic or world championship gold. And it's just a great interview. So make sure you check that one out. I hope you have a wonderful week. Thanks for listening to the Running For Real podcast. Be sure to check out tinamuir.com for show notes and even more helpful running information.